Hello and welcome back, I am Arumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our Scottish campaign. If you're following along at home, we have no idea how to replicate the... the shenanigans and crazy voodoo alliance that we have done yeah, with Denmark. Yeah, we chased down some of those webs quite quite deeply and fucked if I know. Yeah, so we, we figured out, you know, the whole reason why Provence joined is because, uh, yeah, they're a subject underneath France, derp. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, we're just attributing the Denmark and Norway team joining our side as a, as a bug. It just, just doesn't make sense, so. They couldn't have been on the other side, they couldn't have been in the coalition, because they have a truce with us, so they shouldn't have been involved in any, in any case, but uh, for some reason they are, so. I'm enjoying uh, Bohemia having all those armies over on our eastern area. That's nice. Yeah, well, Bohemia is the emperor, so one of the main perks, if you want to, you can actually, kind of like when you look, go to look at the Papal State, there's a button down there for the Holy Roman Empire as well. You can do the exact same thing you did with the Papal State. You can hover over the... Okay, the double eagle crest, it holds like a, a dove with a plus, and then it holds a crown. If you hover over the crown, you can see the effects of being emperor. Mm -hmm. So being emperor gives you uh, like tax income. Upkeep. It's nice. Tax income plus 14, so that's 14 ducats a year. It's not a huge amount of money, but it's nice. But the two big ones there, 22,000 power, 22,500 manpower cap, and 19 force limit. So yeah, a lot. basically doubles or triples the emperor's army size. So yeah, he's uh, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Good. Are you going to yeah. actually go after the English or are you just yep. sieging? No, nope, going after. All right. Going after right now. I remember we have a good general, Donald. Yep. The 162. Alexander. Now, the funny thing to me about this coalition war, and, and one of the reasons why we took the peace deal that we did before, is we don't even really need to worry because... Same thing we did with uh, the whole Castile, Aragon, Portugal situation. Even if they win the army, like the land battle uh, on the continent, they, they're not going to be able to get to our island in any reasonable numbers all at once. Yeah. They're going to come in piecemeal and we're just going to pick them apart when they land. So, nice 10 there, Donald. That might even be a stack wipe. Yep. There you go. Cool. Well, you know the drill from here on out. You know, just carpet siege and... Yep. Just waiting for the ships to repair. They pop up. Hold on. Okay. Um, that's nice. He's got plus fifteen percent morale for uh, nice ten years for no reason. That is really good. That is a pulse event, a five-year pulse event from having offensive ideas. Cool. If I remember correctly, it's very good. Very good when you get it. All right. Nice. Oh, yeah. It take me a second to break this shit up. Oh, hey, there you go. There's something you can spend your diplomat on. Let's go spy on Portugal so we can steal their maps. I know you've been wanting to do that for a while. Yes, Portugal's maps. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Fucking first utility out of this spy that we've had yet. We just lost cavalry companions, which is part of the reason that we know that it is a, uh, a pulse event. You can only ever have one pulse event active at a time. All right. Can I get a second just to pause and take a look at setting yep. up my, my troops here? Just mm -hmm. need a minute. All right, can I, um, I want to reinforce a couple to a thousand, consolidate, mm -hmm. so I can take these easily. Yeah. Can I just do that? That's consolidate regiments, shift consolidate regiments, right? Yep. While holding the shift key, click the button. Don't, don't ever That's try cool. doing shift K. It would make way too much sense for that to work, and it doesn't. Okay. You have to shift left click the button. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, cool. Now be aware, though, that if you actually, uh, well, we, we, you took the button, right? So we do have some manpower. If you're at zero manpower, you don't want to do the one regiment stacks because they will suffer one attrition tick, generally speaking, while they're doing their one month siege. And they'll fall below a thousand men and then they'll just sit there forever suffering attrition. And never, Sounds good. never be able to succeed. So if you have zero manpower and you're trying to do carpet sieges, you've got to do two troops. Okay. And then I just wanted to go look. Uh... All right. I am currently not quite sieging everything. And I guess we have one more of these. What was it, XX or BX for splitting off one and selecting it? Uh, B will open up the army reorganization yep. interface. B will also send the bottom leftmost army to the right side. Z yeah. would send it from right to left. X selects the left side of the army organizer. And C selects the right side of the army organizer. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Good to go? So, yeah, you're going to want to send more infantry to Derbyshire, because uh, while we will win that fight, uh, apparently our infantry are better than an artillery, 
they will not be capable of actually doing the siege. Okay. So let's just talk a little bit while we're waiting here for uh, stuff to happen about coalition wars in general. Yeah, we pop up as well. Okay. You want to uh, you do? You want to talk about? Oh, you want to do that while the time is running? Okay. So we'll do this real quick. We have a blockade. Uh, we either divert resources to get goods delivered via land modes, in which case we lose admin power, or oh. war is hard on everyone, but they'll have to make do. Local unrest plus two, monthly autonomy change plus point one. Yeah, we're not going to trade admin points. No way. Okay. Too valuable. Okay. It's just one province. We have many. Okay. Okay, so we uh, we did not actually expect that the coalition would, would actually attack us. Um, I didn't. I thought that uh, the three allies that we have, the Emperor, France, and Sweden, were strong enough that, that they were not going to even try to attack us. So, that uh, kind of made a mess of my plan then in that case, because nine times out of ten, if there is a coalition against you, you actually want to, to do the exact opposite of what you might expect, which is you want to attack the coalition. And the reason for that is that, number one, you're familiar now with how these Cassus Belly work. The CB we've used the most has been Conquest, right? And that gives you the ability to take specific provinces that you have claims on for no Diplo points. That is the part of the war goal that you are allowed to take as part of your Cassus Belly. Mm -hmm. The actual effects of the Coalition CB, if you would like to see them, um, we need to pull a diplomat back. Go ahead and uh, open up the peace deal negotiations with Verdun, the actual war leader. Okay. And while you're looking at the peace, peace. deal screen, you can mm -hmm. see at the top it says uh, Verdner Scottish Punitive War, and then there's, yep. a, there's a little tiny red flag to the right of our our actual national flag. Okay. Hover over that, you can see the discounts, the things they're allowed to do without paying diplo points with this specific CB. 10% aggressive expansion, 100% prestige, and 75% cost for core revocation, core return, and liberation of vassals. That's 75% off is a lot for... Okay, so to be clear how this these numbers work, 10% aggressive expansion means that they only suffer 10% of the normal amount of aggressive expansion. So it's a 90% reduction in aggressive expansion. Oh, okay. 100% prestige means they get the normal amount of prestige for doing the, these interactions. And 75%... So these are not a reduction at all. This is a percent multiplier. Well, in this case, it, it is a reduction. Seventy-five percent cost means they're they're getting a twenty-five percent discount. Right, but that's a but, but you do this by multiplying by 0. 0.75. It's not a seventy-five percent reduction. It's a twenty-five percent reduction. Correct. Yep. Yep. But the thing is, if you actually look at these costs, these these are very difficult things to obtain discounts or uh, justification for. Core revocation, core return, liberation of vassals, liberation of countries is is normally never part of a casus belli. So basically. The reason you want to generally attack a coalition is that you want to use Conquest or some other CB so that they can't use this CB against you. I see. Um, so you meant, you when you say attack, you don't mean bring the war to them. You mean if a coalition, you think a coalition is about to, about to attack you, it's better to war them directly. Yeah, you, you want to attack, generally speaking, the weakest person that's in the coalition that has the easiest location for you to siege. If it was like, in this in this case, it's great for us that Verdun was the one that declared, which is quite stupid, honestly. It should have been Burgundy. Burgundy should be the war leader. But since Verdun is the war leader, they're a one province minor. If we siege down his one province, he'll have 20 war exhaustion in no time. His enthusiasm will drop like a rock. And he's generally a weak person, right? So you target the weakest member and attack them with your full army and just try to whittle down their willingness to stay at war. And if you make it over something like... Conquest, all you have to do is siege down one specific province to get the ticking war score. So, anyway, um, in the future, if we have another coalition, which we, we probably will, because knowing you and me, we're probably going to end up taking land in this war. I mean, this is a, a coalition war because of the amount of land we've taken, but we should just use it as an excuse to take more land. I agree. Uh, <laughs> just out of curiosity here, uh, mm -hmm. for moving our guys around, I'm sitting, I'm just about to siege down or have just sieged down the last of these territories besides the capital fort. Um, the Roman Empire. Bohemia is no longer the emperor. Okay, that's too bad. Should I be moving our troops to deal with rebel outbreaks, which are going to happen in a minute? We have 90%, yeah. and where's Holstein? Holstein is uh, actually over where the rebels are, where they, the occupations are happening over in Denmark. I don't care about that then, but I should go back towards <laughs> uh, 
which is which is actually really ideal for us right now because what's funny is if the rebels fire both our allies and our enemies will aggressively hunt down rebels because <laughs> they're gonna yeah. they're gonna see him as a hostile force involved with uh, this, you know the, the war so they're just gonna kill him for us but yes you yeah. should go take care of the ones in Sligo and Tyrone and that whole thing over in Ireland well, as far as confession gonna, gotta pop up okay there's that rebellion yeah let's go this way back this way okay uh seal of confession okay we can either get castile scotland adds 25 to their spy network 30 percent chance the event poke discovers plot or we can do unthinkable she should inform the priest that can be heard and gain 10 diplo power i think i value the 10 diplo power okay okay sounds fine to me so uh minor pop up one thing uh that you, you probably have already assumed, I assume you already realize, is that we are probably not going to be leaving our island. Yeah, we're, well, we're, I'm not moving the troops off no. our island. We're just gonna, like we're just gonna sit here, and uh, I don't need to leave my troops in hostile territory. I should combine our armies, right? Uh, once you have put down the rebellions that uh, that you're concerned about firing, I would even consider going down to like sixty percent morale, yeah. um, you know, sixty percent maintenance, and then just just wait. Keep an, keep an eye on the waters, see if anyone's trying to land. And, uh, you can. You can park your armies in, in hostile territory once the rebels are put down for loot. Yeah, well, that's what I do, but I, I mean, there's no reason to leave five guys in, uh, whatever the fuck they were sieging down. Hmm, yeah, no. I would keep the army together for security. Uh, looks like the size of the rebellions. The Danish separatists are going to be huge. 32,000 troops are going to rebel. So many. Slagonians are going to be a 10 stack, and they just fired. Okay. The fort is not uh, within range to protect it, so you want to march on it right away so they don't get the uh, separatism. Uh, okay, so we just got a noble pop-up. Okay. Um, and we, our options are the nobility loses 10 more loyalty, and we lose one stability, or we can get minus 10% national tax modifier for 20 years the nobility gains 10 loyalty okay I wasn't listening because I just realized something relatively important but go ahead say it okay. one more time if you don't mind two options the first is we lose one stability and the nobility loses 10 loyalty that's going to bring them down to 10 loyalty but we have to lose the stability uh, alternatively uh, we can gain 10 loyalty off of the nobility but we lose the nas- we, we lose 10% off our national tax modifier for 10 years yep uh very consistent logic we've had the whole, almost the entire campaign. If you had a button that you could use to spend money to buy admin points, would you click it? Yeah. So if the if the equation here is trading money to to save stability, which is admin points, then it's a pretty straightforward. There is no choice. Don't okay, take. Don't take. Want it to do anyways. Yeah. Don't take the stab hit. Make the nobility happy. You're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, the Sligo province is, is outside of the zone of control of Pale. So you got to march on that as soon as you can to prevent the separatism from getting increased so the thing that I realized while you were reading that is that uh, so we got our pop up about the, the new emperor right mm-hmm. which means that Bohemia died that's what causes an election which means that we didn't get a union automatically and I think it's probably because we are at war right now however yeah. you'll notice that the ruler of Bohemia is a steward King Elector Carol the Sixth. Uh, Karel the Sixth, Stuart. So we now have the same dynasty as the uh, as Bohemia. So right, unselect an army without uh, with the hotkey. With a with a hotkey, press the escape button. So I keep uh, trying to select territories to look at them and moving my army around where I don't want to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So so we we did get Bohemia. Well, kind of. We we got. The same dynasty. It's not the ideal outcome. I think that if we hadn't been at war, there's a pretty good chance we would have ended up at war in a succession. A succession war would have spawned to to make us the the, the ruler of Bohemia directly. But because Bohemia was in a, in a war, that's not allowed to happen. So instead, mm. it just kind of downgraded our, our benefit, and now we just have the same dynasty, which is good. It means that in the future we could potentially force ourselves upon their throne, right? Like right now, if we were uh, at peace, we could. We could claim their throne, say, hey, we want that land, and we could just go attack them, and then make them our subject, which we might end up doing. But we'll talk about that after the Coalition War, because there's really nothing we can do about it, about it right now. 19 stack of Denmark troops down here in Bohemia? Yeah. What the hell is he doing down there? Uh, well, most of that's Bohemia. 
There's a seven oh, stack of, over, of Denmark, and most of it's yeah. Bohemia. He's just unseizing the province occupied by Verdun. Yeah, yeah. There's too many countries in this game that are yellow right now. We got Castile, Scotland, and Verdun are all like the same color. So clearly, many of them need to die. Yeah. It will be the true primary color. Yes. 20% chance of the Danish Separatists firing every single month. Uh, and... There we go. Okay. Correct. Alright, back this way. Okay, looks like, uh... Kind of a card. Kind of wrong. I'm not going to worry about that. Oh, rigorous researchers. You just gain 40 of every, uh, monarchy point. Okay, I, that's awesome. Yep. You've, uh... Too. You've got rebels who are teleporting to Northumberland on January the 25th. Teleporting to Northumberland on January the 25th. Who the fuck is yep. Northumberland? Guys, yeah. Alright, I'll get my ass over that way. Yeah, just, just same location they went to uh, when they teleported before from Sealand. I'm not sure. I, I mean, is that historically accurate, the teleporting? I think it's just supposed to symbolize that they you know, got onto boats or something. Um, I had a thought. Stability and expansion. Are we able to... no. Okay. Just be aware that the clergy are 32 months away from having their disaster fire. Okay. Um, our cores are currently paused because of the occupations. Yep. Um... We could. We could try two separate peace nations. Um, no, that's not true. It's a close war. My so bad. Many. There's that 32 stack. <laughs> so, so bad for everyone involved. Yeah, so Let's hopefully hope. uh, our allies will take care of that for us. Yeah. Let's hope so, because that's a big stack. Yeah. So things are going pretty well for us right now. I mean, we're at, tw we're at 36 war score. We haven't even done anything, really. Um, you haven't. I've killed England's army. Yeah. We're blockading Verdun's capital and their only other fort, just trying to to uh, raise their war exhaustion so that they are less interested in staying in the war. If you hover over their war enthusiasm, you'll notice a new modifier that hasn't been in any other war we've been in so far, called Coalition War Plus 30. It's just uh -huh. a modifier that you will always see. Anytime there's a Coalition War, the war leader will have plus 30 enthusiasm. It's designed to force the war leader to stay at war, to, to achieve their goal, if possible. Okay. There's a couple other situations where that type of a modifier will pop up, but uh, it's pretty pretty uncommon outside of coalitions and special events like scripted wars. The French are getting kind of beaten up in Paris right now. Yeah, they just had to retreat. Thanks, thanks France for losing us 3.62 war score. Good job. There's a lot of units in France's borders. France has a lot of borders. Where's this freaking rebel stack arriving? They are. Looking at January the 30th. We've been playing on speed 2. You're probably used to speed 3 now. Oh no! Oh no, it's the Admiral. Never mind. I was going to say, I thought our General just died, but nope, it's just the Admiral. Who cares about him? Alright, well I'm going to go January the 30th, you said, right? Yes. Why am I parking my army here when I could be getting fucking loot? Are you insane? Um, because if you're not there by January 30th, you will have to cross a river into Marsh, which is bad terrain. You do want to okay, be there by January 30th, but... Right, we'll just do a quick loop. For fun. Yeah. <laughs> On these. Okay. All right. But so I could have been doing that earlier. That's my point. Yes. Okay. I don't think we really need military tech nine to win this war, so I would consider taking that final military idea now. Oh, did it pop up? Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Can we pause and have a look at it? I want to look at it. Yeah. So we get discipline. That's good. By the what way, when uh, we finish it. Is there some finishing bonus benefit for this that I can see? Yes. Hover over the actual lightning. Recover army light morale bolt. speed by five percent. Okay. Yeah. So now that that's a bit misleading, okay? Um, grab your grab your army. Yep. In the top left corner of the army interface, hover over the morale bar. It says this unit will recover 22.4 percent of its maximum morale each month. Base fifteen on controlled territory plus five, and then our army tradition increases it. When it says recover army morale speed plus five, it's not saying you get five percent faster morale. It's saying you get plus five percent per month total. So we, we would go from twenty two point four up to twenty seven point four, which is. Wow. It's a, a it's a lot more than it reads, right? You could almost read yeah. it like plus thirty three percent morale recovery speed. In in cool. most circumstances, especially in hostile terrain, because you you wouldn't have that on on own. What's it called again? Uh, uncontrolled provinces plus five. 
So anyway, um, you can actually spread out and loot now because Sweden is being very nice and they are killing the Danish Separatist force. Or the ones that were supposed to be coming my way? Yeah, they're over there battling in Holsten right now. Ah, oh, the bastards. All right. well, you're complaining about the Swedes helping us out? Yeah, I was going to get... What were we gonna, well, I guess killing Separatists, killing Rebels probably doesn't give us any war score, huh? No, it has absolutely nothing to do with the war. That's too bad. Um, I'm going to loot that 18 stack. Now, you do have the opportunity, should you be so inclined, now that you've unlocked two full idea groups, you could turn on a policy. If you wanted oh, right. to. right. How did I do that again? That's... That would be under your Missions and Decisions tab. You can have five policies active at a time. When you turn a policy on, it has to stay on for 10 years minimum. So it's a 120 monarch point commitment when you click the button. Um, yeah. After those 10 years have passed, you can revoke it freely at any time, but you can never have more than five policies. You don't have to have any. You could just completely ignore this mechanic if you don't want to pay monarch points. But because of the idea groups that you have selected, you have exactly one policy available to you. It is the Anti-Smuggling Act, which will give you... I don't you... think 120 monarch points is worth 10% trade efficiency. We're not really doing embargoes, so... Yeah. Um, we are only embargoing England right now. We should be embargoing other nations, most likely. But, uh... In fact... Yeah. Can we... <laughs> yeah, we can't embargo Denmark, because we have a truce with them. But, uh, we might want to consider embargoing some of these other nations in the English Channel. But, we'll do that in the next episode, because we have to take a break here. See you guys soon. See you in a bit.